Dave and Sam, you talk about pocket shooters. This is going to be something. I don't think we'll have one out of the hole this time. Well, they're both something else, I'll tell you, Jack. They really hit it. Steve Fair leading off. Mm, that hurt. Dave, I'm going to fool Sam. Sam, what's the question this week? The question? Uh-huh. Who's the queen of bowling? The recent queen of bowling. And she won it twice, two years back to back. How about that? That's a good little tip I'm giving you. Do you send those cards to Mystery Quiz, 1821 Summit Road, room 216, Cincinnati 45237, and a $50 gift certificate after the drawing next week from Carl's Bowlers Panock. Look out, look out. Ooh. That was gaining ground there, Dave. Uh, Jack, I, uh, I went down and talked to Steve after uh, after the match, and like I pointed out that he uh, did ease up on his speed. Well, he told me he did that in intentionally to perform an experiment, like I told you he might. Well, you know uh, what he does every time, don't you? Well, when you bowl with a uh, bowler of Steve and Dave's caliber for many years, you learn to help each other, and uh, part of it's knowing the other guy's game. There's the top qualifier, Dave Coward. Fellow who's always in a hole. Sam, who won the, uh, who was the question last week oh. and what was the answer? Who was the king of bowling last year? And it was Terry Ciccone. And we'll have the drawing at the end of the program and a $50 gift certificate Certificate from whom? Christ State Bowling Supply. Oh, you're right on the ball. And we got, new, Gizzy, Dave. we got a new manager here too, Jack, Don Tenenbrink, and they're going to have the city tournament here for men in February, the ladies in March. And the champion, champion, the ladies will be here the last week of May. What a, what a shot, Jack. What, I felt that back here. That was just an unbelievably bad break. Uh, David, oh. David could not have thrown that ball any better. It was a fantastic shot, a horrible break. You know, he had one last week. It was a seven pin. It cost him the king. Oh, he buried one. <laughs> He's always in that pocket. The one thing about him, Dave, as you know, he never changes expressions. No, I, uh, on top of being one of the uh, most steady bowlers on our team, David was almost uh, always the most steady temperament-wise, too. I was breaking pencils and <laughs> punching things, and Dave was always just kind of nice and mellow. Yeah. It helps to stay calm. Yeah, yeah. She's even Steven. Those two are back again. Oh, Jack, they're back again? Oh, really? Uh, you know, the, the traveling leagues are bowling at uh, both the boys and girls at Northwest, and the entries closed there for the city tournament in Hamilton this coming Sunday. Now, Dave, I'm going to fool him again. Where is qualifying next Saturday, Sam? Oh, we're going to be at Dell Fair next Saturday with Charlie Goldfuss starting at 8 a.m. in the morning. 8? 8 a.m. we're going to start here. 9.30, and we're going to put on an additional shift at 5.15 even. Well, you know everything, you know that? Another, another excellent shot, Jack. Uh, Isn't that beautiful? I think Steve's, uh, Steve's dialed in now. He knows what ball he wants to use. He's got his speed back up to where he, uh, where he wants it. I don't think it. he'll be experimenting there anymore. No, not against Dave Keller. Uh, we were at Kingpin yesterday, and the manager, Jimmy Lyles, was sitting here right in front of us. And next month at Brentwood, we're going to have the print craft tournament. <laughs> this guy's just a, a source of information, I'll tell you. <clears throat> well, Dave... I'd shake my head, too, if I were you. Uh, again, Jack, like uh, like the first game, uh, that wasn't a ring and ten. That was a, uh, a weak ten, and it's caused by dropping the thumb down into a position where you really cannot get the good, hard forward roll on the ball. Even though it could have struck, it was not one of his better shots. Shooting the ten. No problem. A lot, of, a lot of times a bowler and, and a lot of the average bowlers around the city and even the better bowlers, they might complain or think they should carry every pocket shot, but this game is so intricate and so technical that uh, just because you hit the 1-3, you don't always deserve a strike. You know, Dave, it's something that you do automatically and don't know you're doing it. It's dropping maybe from that 11 or 12 o'clock position down to the 9. Yes, sir. It's very easy to do, Jack. One of the, one of the easiest mistakes in bowling. No doubt about it. 
We could easily say, Dave, even though, as you say, the one in the third frame wasn't a good, solid strike, he could have had four in a row. Oh, definitely. So. Oh, definitely. And here he comes, Mr. Automatic himself, bowler of, amateur bowler of the year in the world, not Cincinnati, not the U.S., in the world. Wasn't it Bowler's Journal who yes, sir, gave him that honor? Last, last month's issue, and uh, for the folks at home watching right now, you can understand why. Steve, uh, along with an entourage, will be going down to Houston, Texas. Uh, I believe he's leaving uh, next Saturday, isn't he, Jay? Sunday, I believe, or Saturday or Sunday. Well, I start next Monday a week at uh, Big Texas Lanes in Houston. And, uh, and then yeah. we're going to have the state uh, singles uh, roll off next week in Lima, and Stevie Bunnell is our defending champion. I think Davey's in that, too, aren't oh, you? Oh, they're all in it. Yes, Davey Newrath and Stevie Fair and all of them. We've got about nine bowlers going up to the state, and we've got about six or seven going down to the Nationals. <laughs> Cincinnati's well represented. Now. My God, what a fabulous break that was. Oh. He threw the ball so strong, it drew the six up into the wall, and the six came back and got the back of the ten. It was an incredibly strong shot. Mm. Very powerful. You know, there's such a contrast. You have two pocket shooters here, Dave, but D Steve's ball has so much drive, more so than Dave's. It's been that way for years, Jack. Uh, the thing that has got Dave Cowher to where he is today is his low profile, his low roll, and... Uh, He's been known to strike with four pins on the deck uh, from time to time, too, but uh, ten in a pit that time. Mm. Uh, Jack, I would say Steve throws the ball a little with more authority than Dave, but Dave still hits the pocket oh. and rolls good. Definitely. He's always in the pocket. But Steve, as I say, his ball seems to have so much drive. Oh, it's it got pumped on it. Well, a lot of that oomph might come from the fact that he works out at Nautilus Club yeah, three, that's three right. times a week. The boy's strong. He Strength is very is strong. Right on. Oh, there's one he let up on. You're absolutely right, Jack. He didn't let up. He did not get the full extension through the shot and the ball down the lane. Out in Milford Way, Jack, we got a little six-year-old boy named Craig Dickey. He's one of our faithful watchers, too. Out a bit of information for both of you. Dave, you know him very well, and so do you, Sam. Was our only man to win 10 consecutive weeks on King of Bowling. Dave Newkirk? Yes, sir. He's cut a record. That's right, I heard that. He's yeah. quite a vocalist and guitar player. And uh, Dave's got a record out on the on the market now, and I wish him all the luck in the world. He's gonna have to drop up and see us some Sunday. No one has ever equaled his record. Oh, there he goes again. Davey Hines had nine times. Nine I think, times. Uh, Don Scudder had seven. We got Bob Goodwin on uh, next week. He's the one who defeated Don on that upper at uh, Harrison Bowl that Sunday. Whoa. How do you remember those things? Well, I think I've been around a few times here, I believe. Nineteen years, to be exact. You know, Jack, what the people are watching right now, and Steve Fair is not just a good bowler. He's a, he's a well-built bowler. He's rounded himself out for years, and you're seeing the product of thousands of practice games. You know, he told me on that interview we had a couple of weeks ago on sports of all sorts, Dave, that he's very seriously contemplating going on the pro tour. How do you, you've been on it now. How do you think Steve would make out? It's, it's impossible to predict how somebody's going to do, Jack, but if you put all the stats down, I don't see any way Steve cannot make money on a pro tour. The only thing that uh, one has to consider is the fact that uh, his lovely wife Nancy is going to be, uh, be a mother soon. Mm -hmm. Stephen's going to be a father, and uh, he's got a business to run, and uh, uh, living on the road is tougher than anybody knows. You're going to have a good Samaritan in back of you, don't you? Yes, sir. You tried it, and uh, trying to back yourself, is it's tough. It was a financial disaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is, huh? 
Well, there you see it. Look what he's doing. And that very easily could be seven in a row. That's true. Well, right here, Timmy Smith at uh, Princeton Bowl shot an eight, even 800 here about a month ago. And Dave Callery's only a mark away from them. Steve both from qualifying for the and there comes Dave. Right. Another bad break. He's bowling in bad luck this game. Yes, sir. He threw that ball real well, Jack. Again, I talk about the ring and ten. Uh, you saw the six pin there not even go up and around the neck of the pin. It went around the belly, which is an exception. Just a very bad break. Hi, Dick. Here comes Mr. Automatic. He's had seven in the pocket. Six have resulted in X's. The first one was a spare, and it should have been a strike. Well, I'd like to see a 290 right now, Jack, but again, the tendency is to let up once you know you have your uh, opposition in the bag. Ooh. As I said, did you notice the lack of authority on that shot? Right. Uh, and I'm not wishing bad luck on anybody, and I don't think it's an omen, but I just know Steve, and, and, and his match play record is phenomenal. Uh, the minute he knows he's got a match well in hand, uh, unless you're going for total pins, he lets up. He might let up. If he's going for total pins, forget it. He'll, th he'll throw the next 10. Jack, last year down the U.S. Open uh, up in Connecticut, he, he finished ninth, was a super. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then in May, he wins the all events for the ABC with a fantastic total. Had to go all the way from the fifth through the tenth to win it, and that's what how cool he is. Well, Jack, uh, we've, three years ago in St. Louis, we won the, won the title, the ABC doubles title. Year before, we finished seventh. Well, last year, we finished seventh, and that's an ABC record also. Now he's being back with authority again. Yes, sir, he did. I threw that ball very well. Well, Dave, you're talking about the ABC. He holds a record for 17 consecutive 200s, too, you know. Yes, sir. With the first one mm -hmm. in the tournament this next year, he breaks the record of consecutive 200 games. Well, it's too little too late for this fellow right here. That's bold and bad luck. That's true. 209, 165 in the eighth. It's, hey. I believe it is. I interviewed him the night he just completed rolling the second one. You talk about somebody being on cloud nine. <laughs> well, he can get a 205, am I right? 205, right on a button. So this one belongs to Steve. Let's see, what did he have, Dave? 225, the first one. He can get a 269 here. That should be something with this young Massey kid in the finale. He can throw a lot of strikes. Yes, don't anybody underestimate Jim Massey. I... <laughs> Gonna be your partner, isn't he? Uh, Jim, uh, we've we've kind of put together a makeup team to bowl in the city this year, Jack. Uh, we're going to have Jim Massey's bowling with us, and uh, as you call him, Wild Man Lou. That's my <laughs> that's my brother-in-law. He's also going to be bowling with us. Uh, Lou Hudipole, Rick Pitcairn will be another member of the team, and Kevin O'Brady. Well, there's number one in the turn. We gotta get him back on the program again. We haven't had Kevin O'Brady on for so long. No, last time he bowled was over at uh, Walt Center Lanes that Sunday. I don't think I've ever seen a fellow bowl so fast that he does. Oh, he Some, picks that sometime, ball up and he's gone. <laughs> that's right. Sometimes his fingers aren't even in it when he starts <laughs> his approach, Jack. He's a new father, by the way. Oh, he is. He's a new father. Wife and child getting along fine. Number two, Steve. No, nope, not that way. Jack, so far, uh, out of the whole day, the only mistake Steve has made is to let up right. on a shot. Other than that, he's been perfect. Look, 257 won't be too bad. I'll, I'll, take, one of, I'll take one of those every game. Sam. There it is. The winner is Stevie Fair. We'll be right back after this. 